I don't know how you'll ever find yourself in a situation like this, but I have some good news in case you do in the future. You have a chance of surviving even if you get swept into an airplane's turbine. Well, these things aren't meant to be shredders after all. Plus, you probably have something on you that'll increase your chance of survival. But before that, let's talk about how to survive an airplane crash. It's rare, but it's more likely to happen than getting sucked into a turbine. Number 10. Dress appropriately The first thing you do to increase your survival rate is to dress appropriately. I understand that flip-flops are comfortable as I use them a lot too, but those won't be the best footgear inside an aircraft. And ladies, while I agree that heels can make you feel like a boss, it will probably make it challenging for you to move in case of emergencies. So the best shoes to wear on an airplane, it's your most comfortable pair of rubber shoes or sneakers. These old reliables can amply protect our feet when we're on the ground, so it'll do just as well while we're stuck in the air. Number 9. Choose safe seats Let's have a little game, shall we? Which seat do you think is the safest inside the airplane? The ones in the back? The ones in the front? Or perhaps the chairs in the middle? Well, I'm here to tell you that they're all about the same. How come? Because it depends on the situation. Engine trouble? Well, then the back's not gonna have a great time. The plane is nosediving? People in front better unbuckle their seats and jump into the back then. Aircraft somehow split in two? Then sadly, the people in the middle will be sent flying several thousand feet in the air. See what I mean? In my opinion, the safest and best seat is any seat. In terms of safety, that is, so long as you study where the emergency exits are. You can't be sure there won't be smoke inside the cabin, so it'll be helpful to know by heart which direction to head to in case the crew says to get to the exits. You won't panic much then either. See? Smart. Number 8. Stay awake no, I don't mean you must stay awake throughout the flight. That's highly exhausting and will cause you to pass out eventually. By staying awake, I mean to keep awake during takeoff and landing. You see, these two times are when plane rides usually go awry. Yep, it's not while in the air in the middle of the flight, it's at the beginning or the end. Remember, plus three minus eight, meaning you should be alert for the first three minutes of your flight and again during the final eight minutes. Pay attention during this time. Don't let anything distract you. If anything, during this period, you should mentally review what you should do in case things go wrong. Of course, follow overhead instructions still. If the attendants say to keep your seatbelt on, then keep it on. Don't let panic overwrite what professionals have to say. Number seven, pay attention to safety instructions. This one is a no-brainer to most of us, but it doesn't hurt to remind people, right? Always pay attention to onboard safety instructions. I don't care if you've gone on several flights already. It's good practice to do this. Why? Well, no plane or flight is the same. Plus, for you guys suffering from anxiety too, it's something that'll help tone that welling sense of panic down. Hmm, how are flights different? From the times I've gone on overseas trips, I've noticed that the inflatable's placement differs each time. Some also have different rules for stowing your baggage, so it poses minimal risk should something happen on board. Then, of course, there's the thing with the plane floors. Some of the planes I've been on have neon signages stuck to the wall around ankle level, while others have indicators on the plane pathway. On rare occasions, there didn't seem to be any visual indicators at all. Number 6. Keep Calm so far, all we've talked about are preparations before an incident occurs, and hopefully we only ever have to go through those first four things. But this is it. Let's assume something dreadful is happening on board. What do we do now? Before anything else, don't forget to breathe. By that, I mean try your best to keep calm. Why is that? Because if your mental game isn't in tip-top shape, then you won't even be able to remember anything we talk about in this video. If you happen to be panicking and still recall what we've talked about, you might commit a mistake at the last moment because of the overwhelming sense of anxiety. Don't worry, no one's judging. We've all been there in very intense moments of our lives. But you see what I mean. Unless you calm yourself down, you won't be able to get yourself out of the situation effectively. Even assuming someone is there to help you, you might accidentally drown them out because of your thoughts of doom and gloom. So you understand, guys. Keep calm no matter what. Number 5. Leave your baggage behind Listen, I know this rule is going to be hard for a lot of us to follow. Hell, I'd be tempted not to follow it myself if I'm in a situation like that. I mean, some of our most prized possessions are in there. Our passports, wallets, cards, and even some sentimental photos. But you know what? Sometimes the loss of these things is better than losing our lives. In an emergency plane situation, leave your items behind. It's probably not worth it if it takes a chunk of your time. Because in those moments, you could already be disembarking the aircraft. You don't know what else can happen, guys. For all we know, it can turn into a fiery death pit in minutes. You don't want to be stuck and burned because your baggage slowed you down, right? If it's a backpack stowed beneath your chair and you can grab that in 0.2 seconds, then fine, take it with you. But if it's something overhead that's heavy and blocks fellow passengers from leaving, then no, repurchase it once you return home. 
Number 4. Get away from the plane Alright, you did it. Now the worst is over. You're outside the plane. There's still one thing you have to do though, and it's something I doubt I need to remind you guys to do. But still, let me say it for good measure. Get away from the plane. To be clear, you should move at least 500 feet away in an upwind direction. Remember how I said to leave your belongings behind because the aircraft can turn into a massive fire any minute? Yeah, that's partly the reason behind this rule. The other reason is so that you'll be found more quickly. See, as I mentioned before, disasters can also rarely happen mid-flight, meaning you'll probably have an emergency evacuation at whatever random place the pilot deems safe enough to land. According to theflightexperts.com, moving upwind from the crash site will make it easier for rescuers to find and help you. Time for today's best pick. It's the topic you all click this video for. How do we survive getting sucked into a plane's turbine? Find out the answer next. Number 3. The blades aren't designed to shred Uh-oh, I hear some people reacting in very apparent shock. Don't worry, I reacted the same way when I heard it. Who would have guessed it, right? I'm sure I'm not the only one who saw the gruesome pictures of the shredded man because of that freak accident. Google had no sensors before. Anyway, this is the case. One guy even survived being sucked into the turbines, but we'll talk about him later. Still, it's incredible to know considering the blades spin at 1,000 to 20,000 RPM. So how is this possible? Well, the blades will surely tear through anything relatively soft, but anything more than that? It'll work the engine less efficiently and will most likely stall. I'm not saying test your luck or anything since that's very dangerous, but at least it's some… consolation? Though I doubt anything can comfort someone in that situation. But anyway, the last two things on this list will probably help you more than the blade design. Number 2. Pilot Awareness Yep, I bet you didn't think this would be a part of the list. Did you think I would solely focus on the machinery? <laughs> no way. Chances are that if you do get sucked into a turbine, the pilot's awareness is what's going to save you the most. After all, if they leave the engine on even though your body potentially stalled the blades, given how delicate we all are, it'll just be a matter of time until you become biological goo. So I hope you're great friends with the pilot. Or at the very least, I hope he had a good night's sleep before the flight because if he didn't detect what's going on for some reason, then your chances of surviving flew out the window, buddy. Remember the guy who survived earlier? Part of the reason he's still with us is because the pilot could tell something went wrong and turned the engines off immediately. Number 1. Equipment hitting the blades Last but not least, I hope you wear proper gear if you're hanging around a plane because it can save your life. Let's talk about the guy who survived being sucked into a turbine. It was a freak accident, but John Bridges, 21, found himself pulled into the aircraft's jet engine intake. He was on duty then, checking to ensure the jet was connected to the catapult for takeoff. When he was sucked in, the intake ripped off his float coat, goggles, helmet, and tools. Because of this, the engine suffered a large explosion. Sounds terrible, right? But it saved his life. Since it wasn't Bridges who went in first, the equipment tore up the fan blades. His helmet was shredded, yes, but he was alive. He suffered a broken collarbone, a blown eardrum, and some cuts and scrapes. It sounds horrible still, and I'm sure he was panicking throughout, but at least he survived. See guys, safety gear does work wonders for us after all, sometimes in ways it wasn't intentionally designed for.